Welcome to Computer and Network Security. Today we are going to talk about denial of service and distributed denial of service attacks. A denial of service attack occurs when an attacker continually bombards uh, an access point or some other computer uh, with various messages designed to consume resources. They're often easy to trace though uh, and spoofing is almost always used. So spoofing the IP address uh, and the MAC address or denial of service attacks is almost always used. Otherwise, you're going to be able to trace it back directly to uh, who initiated that attack. Because of the ease of traceability of denial of service attacks, distributed denial of service attacks uh, are used much more frequently. So, um, with a just a denial of service attack, uh, an attempt is made to prevent users of a service from using that service. Um, so with the distributed denial of service attacks, uh, we can make or, or people can make computer systems inaccessible by flooding the servers, networks, or other computers with useless mm -hmm. traffic so that legitimate users can no longer use those resources. Um, in a typical uh, DDoS attack, a large number of computers become compromised and those then send useless packets to uh, some other computer or network in an attempt to deny uh, service to users or to that specific network. Um, a distributed denial of service attack attempts to consume uh, the resources of, of the uh, target so that it cannot provide a service. We classify DDoS attacks in terms of the type of resource that is consumed. Uh, the resource consumed is usually either an internal host uh, on the target system or data transmission uh, such as a bandwidth uh, in the local network. Okay, so take a look here. There are two diagrams here showing some denial, uh, distributed denial of service attacks. The first one is the distributed SIN flood attack, and the bottom one is the distributed ICMP attack. So looking at the uh, top figure, the distributed SIN flood attack, um, the first thing that happens is that the attacker has to take control over uh, a number of other computers. This is usually through some kind of malware viruses, um, trojans, or so on. Uh, then uh, it has each one of those computers, so with whatever that malware is, uh, it makes it where at a specific time all of these computers are going to send the TCP connect, the send uh, packets, through to uh, some other server, to some server. As you know, when a server receives a connect request uh, over TCP IP, then it is going to respond with an ACK. So it will respond with this acknowledgement and that could be coming back directly to each one of these computers or they could have spoofed the IP address so that it's going back to a different computer altogether so that they don't even get the return uh, coming back which makes it even more difficult to trace uh, where the DDoS originated. However, any time that the connect request is made to a server, it's going to hold on to this half-open connection. And that consumes resources, memory, as well as CPU on the uh, server. Now, if you have enough computers that are all coordinated to do this at the same time, uh, this is uh, a very real problem of taking down network access uh, to that server because it'll consume all of its resources on these uh, TCP connect messages that are coming through. Uh, another DDoS attack would be the uh, figure at the bottom, which is the distributed ICMP attack. Now in this case, uh, the computers, uh, there doesn't necessarily even have to be uh, a virus or malware out in the network to make this one happen. So there often will be that the attacking machine will compromise a certain set of computers, but each one of those computers is just sending out um, 
messages to all of these uh, other computers here, which then will send this ICMP echo packet to the target router. So once the computers have been uh, compromised, they're going to send out this uh, echo packet to the target router or computer. Uh, they all do it at the same time, which is going to consume a lot of bandwidth. Each time that an echo packet is received, the router is going to have to turn around and respond with the echo. So it's going to try to be responding to all of these echoes, and it's going to bog it down where it's not able to uh, deal with other traffic that is coming through. And uh, that's going to make it where there's no uh, transmission capacity uh, for any legitimate traffic that is going through that router. So that gives you two uh, DDoS attacks. One way that we can classify these also is either as a direct DDoS attack or as a reflector DDoS attack. In the direct attack, the attacker uh, implants the zombie software on a number of computers through uh, the internet. And then those are the ones that actually will attack uh, the, in this diagram, uh, what's, what's being shown as the victim. Uh, with the reflector DDoS attack instead, there's an extra layer of machines. Uh, and so the, the zombies construct packets that require a response that contain the, target, the target's IP address as the source IP address. And so then these packets are sent to uninfected uh, machines. So these uh, reflectors down here aren't infected with anything. And so if, uh, so thinking about that previous example that I had, we send an ICMP packet down here and maybe it echoes it back to here. Mm -hmm. And so when it echoes it back there, all of the data from all of these computers is going to bog down that one, especially if there's a lot more computers than what you see right here uh, in this diagram. So that would be known as a reflector DDoS attack. Okay, so how, how does someone go about creating this uh, distributed denial of service attack network? Well, the first step would be for the in attacker to infect a number of machines with some kind of malware, some zombie software that ultimately is used to carry out the attack. And what they need for this is software uh, to carry out the attack, a vulnerability in a large number of systems, and then a strategy for locating vulnerable machines. Um, and that's called scanning. There are a few different strategies for how you find these vulnerable machines. One of them is uh, just random, just uh, a compromised host just probes random addresses in the IP address space and they just keep probing different ones so each infected computer just randomly chooses different IP addresses. Uh, a hit list, so these would be if we're attacking something specifically or someone specifically here is the list that we would like to attack. Topological uh, is uses information contained on an infected victim machine to find more hosts to, to scan. So this could be uh, other computers that you have communicated with recently, maybe in some kind of a cached file somewhere, and that would be a topological scan. And then the last one down there, the local subnet, uh, if we're behind a firewall, this one is often going to be used so that we're looking for hosts that are within uh, the local network. This is often uh, an easier strategy uh, if we use this one because you may uh, be trusted. The computer that's performing the attack may be trusted if it's already within the network. And that's why it's so important that all of the users on a network are conscious about the uh, potential for attacks and that they don't open up executables from uh, other computers or other people when they may not, may not know or be able to trust uh, that specific computer. How do we combat uh, DDoS attacks? Uh, well, obviously the first one there, attack prevention and preemption. Uh, before the attack, this would be the best way to do it. Uh, these mechanisms enable the victim to endure attack attempts without denying service to legitimate clients. Uh, this is the best way to do it, although this is also one of the hardest ways to do it. Uh, techniques include enforcing policies for resource consumption, providing backup resources that are available on demand. So maybe you have other routers or you can flip over to a fail-safe uh, if one router becomes bogged down. Um, prevention mechanisms um, such as uh, modifying systems and protocols on the internet to reduce the possibility of DDoS attacks is another approach. And this is uh, in research and 
things that are, are being implemented in the newer hardware, uh, as well as the newer operating systems as ways to prevent DDoS attacks. The second one, attack detection and filtering, which happens during the attack. Uh, we're going to talk about intrusion, intrusion detection systems in the future, but that would be where this would fit in. Um, so it tries to detect the attack when it's happening, so as it begins, and then respond immediately, trying to minimize the impact of the attack on the target. So we can look for suspicious patterns of behavior. Maybe we know what typical uh, data usage looks like on the network, and we're going to have some kind of an anomaly where it just spikes at some point. And we might need to keep watch on that for a few seconds to a couple minutes and then decide that a DDoS is occurring and then try to take measures to uh, fix it. The third approach, the attack source trace back end identification, which is going to be both during and after the attack. Um, attempts to identify the source of the attack is a first step in preventing future attacks. However, this often does not work very well because especially in a DDoS, the computers that have actually perform the attack on that target are not the ones that initiated the attack. They just happen to be uh, collateral because they uh, maybe were compromised themselves or maybe they were just reflector computers that were just responding the way that networks actually worked. So uh, DDoS attacks are quite difficult to detect. There's a lot of papers. I have some papers posted in today's lecture. Uh, there are a lot of papers on trying to figure out how we can go about combating them. So take a look at those papers. Uh, it's a really, really interesting topic. It's one that gets a lot of attention in conferences and, and journals right now. Um, and so take a look at that. Let me uh, remind you also that, um, that you need to be careful uh, if you are going to be playing around with DDoS attacks, that you are not attacking uh, other computers. If you want to test this and, and uh, have a mock attack on one of your own computers, that's fine, and see if you can combat it for your project. You're going to have to do something like that. However, um, do not attack uh, organization computers, university servers, uh, or any other ones because it is illegal, and if you are caught, you uh, could face uh, misdemeanor as well as felony charges depending on how much damage was uh, done or could be proven. So uh, just a little... Um, word of advice there. It's definitely okay for you to test this on your own computers within your own network, but make sure that you're not targeting any other computers. Okay, uh, so that gives you an overview of denial of service and distributed denial of service attacks. If you have any questions, let me know. Good luck.